With the release date of December 3rd coming for Halo Reach on PC and MCC, many people are actually calling for a delay on the PC version of the game. As someone who's played in the flight, I may disagree with that, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. <laughs> How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news informational kind of topic commentary we're talking about today. We're talking about uh, should be the PC version of Halo Reach be delayed? Well, I'm gonna get into all the details on this video guys. If you like these kind of commentary like videos, please make sure to tap that like button. Let me know if you wanna see some more content like this. It really does help out the channel a lot. Leave a comment down below if you had a chance to play the flighting program of Halo Reach. You know, what are your thoughts? Do you think the game should be released now? Or do you think it should wait and delay it after the Xbox version? Let me know, I'll read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. And if you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with everything going on within the Halo community, Make sure to tap subscribe guys because you're always uploading awesome informative content. So let's get right into the video here. So like I said at the top of this video, many people are calling for the delay of the PC version when it comes to Halo Reach. As many people are starting to cite that this game doesn't exactly feel as ready when it's ready kind of feeling. And now I'm sure there are some kind of outside parameter things playing and evolving when it comes to this uh, release date announcement. And so what I'm going to do guys is kind of go into the discussions what people are talking about when it comes to the issues people are experiencing and whether or not those are something that you feel they should delay the PC version on. Now two big features that are going to be missing off, off of the release of Reach onto PC is going to be Forge and Theater Mode are not going to be on the release of this game that will be coming later in 2020. Now, this, this has been known for months that this was the planned release date or release features that were, that were not going to be in the game. And so a lot of people obviously expect to have those features and especially Halo Reach, much less just a Halo title in general. Halo Reach was the first Halo game where they really expanded on what it, you can do with Forge. It was the first, I feel like the true envisioning of what Forge is for the community and what 343, uh, what Bungie at the time was able to provide. Not being able to create your own maps or install your own maps even I believe as well when it comes to Halo Reach's launch is going to be a bit of a disappointment. It did actually hurt Halo 5's launch quite a bit, not launching with Forge, but I do believe it launched about a month or two after the release of Halo 5, but again, people always cite that first impressions are always super important, which they always are. I think uh, that might not be the case when it comes to these features, as because I feel like the biggest thing that you need to get down is having that 4v4 match made experience. How does that play out? Is it having any experience with glitches or issues or anything like that? Well, so I'll give you guys my opinions on that when it comes to uh, later on this video like since I did get a chance to play the flight 3 quite a bit I'm gonna say on topic here guys so talking about the forge right there yeah yes I do wish it was at launch but I understand it being uh, delayed a little bit later into early 2020 early hopefully 2020 uh, but uh, hopefully guys I will come around soon enough for everybody now even though we are missing forge there is still gonna be modding modding is still very much a thing when it comes to MCC on PC as a whole and 343 sounds rather open to the idea of modding, where you can pretty much just do whatever you want as long as it doesn't affect the online multiplayer. It sounds like 343 is pretty much open to whatever people are doing. I've been already seeing people within the flight and program creating awesome game modes, like a dogfight mode, but using the, uh, the spacecraft that you used in uh, Halo Reach, one of the campaign missions in Halo Reach, in a multiplayer match in Forge world, people are just flying around, blowing stuff up. That's amazing, you couldn't pull that off in Forge. I've seen people also do like multiplayer matches on firefight maps and things like that. Like there's a bunch of things you can accomplish using the mod to modding abilities if you know how to do them in this game so that could possibly supplement for 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 the forge feature though it does depend a lot on how accessible those mods are steam does a great job of integrating mods into their platform where all you gotta do is just click a button the mod installs into your game and it launches so as long as these mods can be put in the steam workshop then yeah that's actually even better than forge now theater mode not being a launch feature it does hurt quite a bit as a you know a lot of people are sure gonna want to make montages make machinimas do some kind of recordings it will hurt me quite a bit as a content creator as well as i won't be able to pull off specific angles or do any kind of cool screenshots or anything like that within the game 
uh, which I do like to post up on my Instagram, link in the description down below, guys. And uh, so that's going to be a big hurt, but it doesn't really stop people from recording gameplay. Uh, a lot of people have, like, NVIDIA cards. You can use Shadowplay to record your gameplay if you'd like to on that. And uh, there's various other programs out there that you can use to record your gameplay. Uh, for free as well. Uh, so the biggest issue I'd find is if you're really trying to get more cinematic angles, screenshots, things like that, definitely will hurt when it comes to that community and the feature will be launched at a later date. You can also just use OBS for your recording of gameplay because, well, it has a rate right in there for you. You can do it just fine. If you wanted to, you can even stream to Twitch. It's free and easy. And as long as your quality is good enough, you can probably just rip it straight from the stream and upload it to your YouTube channel if you want to do that as well. There's certainly ways around it. Obviously, it's better to have all those kind of things in game, accessible, ready to go. But there are alternatives that you can use on the PC version as you wouldn't be able to do as easily on console. Now, there are various uh, issues that 343 is currently aware of that they're going to be working on for this uh, release of Reach, like one of them being push to talk. Obviously, it's going to be a very important feature. I'm pretty sure that's something the team could easily patch in. I think it's just a few lines of code that you would have to really worry about with that. There are some V-Sync issues people have been having where like I know uh, our buddy Patman actually was having issues while he was running uh, V-Sync that the game still screen tearing, but I heard that they kind of resolved that for the most part. Um, people getting stuck in menus and crashes. Now, this is something for me has been completely eliminated after the patch, last patch of during flight three of the PC version. But before, I got, got a lot of crashes in between matches. And now, after like the week of playing on that patch, I didn't experience any crashes. There was a previous bug where you get stuck in menus, you'd have to do like some weird alt enter alt tab kind of thing to kind of get yourself back into the game uh, that's been resolved and on my end as well and so the game stability has greatly improved where i can say it's a shippable build even you know it's like i mentioned we mentioned on twitch rivals in, the, in our podcast that we do every monday that there were no crashes the game played smoothly i think people were pretty excited about it so as long as your stability is good, I think that's really going to help out with people's experience with the game. And that issue is going to be input delay. People are saying this when it comes to running higher resolutions, that your mouse might feel a little bit delayed. Now, after the patch that happened in the uh, uh, Flight 3, I actually really don't know as much of an input delay as all. Well. And I'm using VSync as well to kind of solve my screen tearing issues on top of that. And, uh, you know, I've, I'm very familiar playing PC games. You know, I've played a lot of... Uh, you know, I played some Counter Strike. I played uh, mainly Battlefield on PC, uh, a little bit of Call of Duty, uh, various other shooters. I can't, you know, I can't think of off the top of my head. But uh, right now the controls are feeling pretty good. I just think that the game of Halo, your aiming mechanics that you're probably more used to when playing mouse and keyboard, don't apply to Halo because the aiming mechanics are so different, so unique that I found myself using more my directional keys to help aim and then using my mouse to kind of help do micro movements very similar as you would with a controller and so uh, after that patch I know um, Buddy Talk when mentioned about it, he hasn't really noticed any input delay since the update neither have I of course other people have different situations different build setups and uh, so hopefully they're able to figure that out they do recognize the issues basically that the hardware uh, has a lower priority within the game and so they say to put that up at the higher priority list of of, uh, operations need to be computed on your computer that hopefully that will resolve the issue now i know a big issue a lot of people have been having with this announcement is that the game from the last flight was at the towards the end was currently locked at 60, 60 fps to help reduce that input latency and help you know isolate the issue a little bit better now if the game releases at 60 fps i think a lot of people might have some concerns with that since now we're in 2019 that a lot of people are kind of expecting to be able to play especially a game from 2010 at higher frame rates as in like 120 144 even more than that if they wanted to uh, but i would say that the gold standard for pc gaming has always been 1080p 60 fps now that might have gone up a little bit in the more recent like five years or something like that uh, but as long as you can maintain that goal of having a smooth experience of 1080p 60 fps uh, i think that's a bare that's a gold standard that you need to accomplish when it comes to pc gaming and the last flight accomplishes that really well um i do am i kind of i'm a little surprised at how uh, taxing the game is on my system just because it's a game from release from 2010 but I do believe the Unreal Engine adds a lot of computing process when it comes to the MCC uh, but 
you know, obviously they're going to be looking into this, trying to fix this and have it implemented in the future. And hopefully they don't mention if they're going to be able to get this done before the release. Uh, but currently my guess is that it'll probably be stuck at 60 FPS at release. And then a lot later on in the future to be able to work on that. Now I do know there are a lot of games out there that were launched at 60 FPS. Uh, like one game in particular that comes to my mind was Battlefield Bad Company 2 back in the day. Uh, when it came to PC, it was locked, locked at 60 FPS, but you can go into the files of the game and edit that file to where you can actually go above 60 FPS, unlock your and lock your frame rate at whatever things you know frame rate you want to choose. Now, as long as people have that option on PC, then it's just a, it's a it's a simple workaround, not too crazy if you have that ability to do it. And just you now, keep in mind that your game might not be functioning as well as it should be. Another big issue has been the controller aim assist versus PC no aim assist, as this game was specifically designed for the xbox and xbox only that uh, aim assist was definitely taken in mind now reach was also the first game where we really noticed uh, as a increase in uh, say bullet magnetism or aim assist as well in this game not to like an absurd unfair amount that we sometimes see in halo 5 but to a decent amount where it was certainly noticeable i remember some videos back today going a little bit viral on youtube uh, when it came to reach because of uh, some of the um, bullet magnetism that happens in the game but uh, you know a lot of people have been noticing that control players have a little bit of an advantage actually on this game compared to PC keep on mouse which is completely backwards what you would normally expect uh, but I think just like the way the characters move the speed of the game the aim assist as well as the bullet magnetism really plays in favor for the controller which the game was intended to be played on when it was released back in 2010 uh, 343 does say they are looking into this and they're saying like maybe if they tweaked the uh, aim assist or the bullet mag display aim assist on controller on PC then basically what that would happen though is they have a side effect of being uh, having crossplay available in the future for PC and console players not really available uh, they do mention that say, say they've heard the community say have an opt-in option when it comes to uh, playing with a certain amounts of uh, aim assist with a controller but I think that's kind of more problems than it's worth, really. And um, I think you can, you know, I think people are maybe just kind of more new to the controls of keyboard and mouse rather than uh, the controller itself being super overpowered. Uh, but I certainly have noticed on my end, my experience that you can at least keep up with players on keyboard and mouse if you're playing on keyboard and mouse versus controller. But me personally, I think Halo plays best on the controller for Halo Reach. And so I've kind of been sticking with that. Uh, keyboard and mouse when it comes to using vehicles is a whole nother world. That's a huge advantage actually when you're playing like big TB, big BTB or Invasion or other large game modes that have vehicles in them. Keyboard and mouse is actually the way you want to play because you get so much extra mobility because you're able to turn on a dime. It turns like what a vehicle is like the Wraith from a sluggish, slow, inaccurate, hard to aim um, tank to a pinpoint laser accurate death machine like in, I saw on Invasion. So there are pluses and minuses when it comes to using keyboard and mouse or controller on Halo Reach. So ultimately, what do I think? Do I think Halo Reach is ready to be released on PC as well as the MCC? You know, is it ready? Is ready ready right now? Personally, I say yes, actually. I think the game is in a good enough state. It's stable enough. You got the 60 FPS, 1080p, you're working, working just fine. Uh, for my end, mouse controls have been pretty good, and um, you know, I, the only thing I think is really kind of messing up is I've heard like people off, you know, latency offshore uh, having a bit of an issue there. But uh, from my experience, Reach is like it's ready to ship, dude. And there's plenty of other games that release in way worse states right now. They even take an example, Modern Warfare, still having issues when it comes to hit detection, uh, frame rate. <laughs> And also having issues tracking your stats, sometimes not even tracking your stats at all. And so and that game had like five separate development teams working on it to get it all done. And you know, it still has plenty of bugs and weird issues going on with it. A lot of the perks or even a lot of the attachments don't work as well. So there are a lot of things going on with Modern Warfare that had a way bigger team, way bigger resources, and it was releasing way worse state then Reach is going to on the third if it stays the same state as it was on the flight. So keep that in mind, guys, that they're in the uh, concept of the whole gaming sphere. Yeah, it's not releasing perfectly, but as I say, it's releasing in a, like a 
90% state of, yeah, that's good enough for me to call it a good release. Plus, you definitely want to get there in time before the holiday sales around the Christmas time. Because obviously that's going to be a huge boost to the population, get more people buying the game, more people playing the game as well. And the game essay is a good enough state for that release. So that's my opinion. I think we're good to go. I think it's green light. Release the game. People have been crying for it since April. And so I think we're all very ready to play Halo Reach on PC. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you guys think that Reach is ready to release? Or do you think uh, they should let the bun cook a little bit longer in the oven? I do read all the comments to try to reply to most of them as well. And if you're new to the channel, we'll stay updated with anything going on with Halo content. Make sure you tap subscribe, guys. Keep you updated with everything going on in the Halo community. Make sure you, if you missed any videos from me, check out the videos on the screen right now. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.